The seven most common mistakes when taking creatine. Number five is the worst of them, and you might be making it. Stay until the end to find out what it is. Creatine is a very popular supplement in the United States, and without a doubt, it is one of the most well-known among U.S. Americans. There are hundreds of scientific studies proving its safety and effectiveness during workouts, and its effects are quite noticeable for those who use it. However, surprisingly, few people know how to make the most of its benefits. Therefore, in today's video, we will show the seven most common mistakes when taking creatine, and you might be making them. Mistake number one, inadequate mixing. It might be surprising, but many people do not mix creatine properly before consuming it. The liquid becomes cloudy, with creatine granules floating and forming a mist, and the creatine ends up settling at the bottom of the container after a few minutes. If you are doing this, stop immediately, because you are doing it wrong. The correct way is to ensure the mixture is homogeneous to make the most of the benefits during workouts. Creatine granules should not be visible at the time of consumption. They should be completely dissolved. You might be wondering why this happens. Well, the reason is simple. Creatine is osmotic, which means it attracts water around it. If it is not completely dissolved in an adequate amount of water, it can cause gastrointestinal side effects, such as stomach aches. This can result in symptoms such as nausea, stomach pain, cramps, abdominal bloating, and even diarrhea, all due to using too little water and inadequate mixing. Additionally, if the creatine is not well dissolved, you will not be consuming the full dose, as the granules may stick to the walls or settle at the bottom of the container. This can affect your workouts and muscle development over time. Therefore, you should mix it correctly before use. Ensuring that the creatine is well dissolved will help you make the most of every gram of it. Although there are no studies directly proving the effectiveness of poorly dissolved creatine compared to fully dissolved creatine for saturating muscle cells, there is no reason to waste valuable granules and suffer from stomach aches during gym workouts. Creatine is expensive, so don't waste it. Use it properly. It is also important to establish that taking creatine with insufficient liquids can cause gastrointestinal side effects due to its osmotic nature, and you do not want to feel unwell when consuming creatine. During some pre-workout tests, I found that creatine dissolves completely using about 200 milliliters of water for every 2.4 grams of creatine, mixing for about 35 seconds. I recommend you do some tests with your creatine to find the ideal mixing time with water, as some formulas may need more water and more stirring time than others. For example, micronized creatine monohydrate dissolves more easily and is gentler on the stomach due to its smaller particle size. This type of creatine is what I use and recommend you use as well. The best workout results come when you achieve a perfect mixture with no visible granules. If you need to add more water or stir for longer to ensure it is completely dissolved, do so without hesitation. An important tip is to consume creatine as quickly as possible to prevent it from settling at the bottom of the container. Do not let it sit for too long. Additionally, increase your total liquid intake when using creatine. Drinking more water is recommended, and we have made a video explaining why. I will leave the link at the end for you to watch. You can also mix creatine with warm or hot liquids, which can significantly improve solubility. However, it is important to consume it quickly to prevent it from degrading into creatinine, an excretion product. Creatine and creatinine are not the same thing as many think. Creatine degrades into creatinine over time, and this degradation occurs more rapidly with higher temperatures and lower pH. Therefore, if you choose to use a hot liquid to improve solubility, consider increasing the dose slightly to compensate for potential degradation and consume the mixture as quickly as possible 
to ensure creatine's effects on the body and strength training. Mistake number two, taking creatine only on workout days. It is important to understand that creatine works through cellular saturation with the goal of filling muscle stores with phosphocreatine. I recommend consuming between four to six grams daily for a minimum of four weeks to maximize the saturation of stores in your body. Therefore, mistake number two, one of the most common among beginners, is taking creatine only on workout days. The truth is that you should take it every day, regardless of whether you are working out or resting, to keep muscle cells saturated with creatine. It is essential to take it every day, without exception. I recommend maintaining a regular intake schedule. If you take it in the morning, continue doing so every day. If you prefer in the evening or afternoon, keep that specific time. The most important thing is daily regularity without losing focus on workouts and diet, as they are very important for achieving faster results in your body. Consistency is essential for success with creatine, so keep that in mind. If you forget to take it one day, don't worry. Just take it normally the next day and continue without making mistakes. You will not lose gains or effects. Personally, I prefer and recommend consuming creatine after workouts, as there is evidence that it can improve glycogen synthesis. I recommend testing it to see the effects on your body. Mistake number three, taking creatine in the form of dry scooping. For those unfamiliar, dry scooping is a dangerous practice that involves consuming creatine directly from the scoop without mixing it with liquids. But what's wrong with this practice? There is scientific evidence and studies showing that dry scooping can cause respiratory problems, cardiovascular injuries, and even asphyxiation in more severe cases. Therefore, it makes no sense to put dry powder directly in your mouth and hope water will fix it. This can cause serious health problems. And remember mistake number one where we discuss the importance of mixing creatine with water or other liquids to improve results. Taking dry creatine does not make you stronger or special. It just makes you irresponsible and, frankly, foolish. Therefore, avoid this practice. Before we continue, please subscribe to the channel, leave a like, and join our membership area where we share daily more information about health and supplements. Just click the Become a Member button. Mistake number four, doing loading phases. The typical creatine loading phase involves consuming high doses for eight to 10 days, usually between 25 to 30 grams per day, which is a very high dose compared to the regular dose, followed by a maintenance phase with five to six grams daily. However, I have observed that doses above 12 grams at once can cause gastrointestinal problems, such as nausea and diarrhea, and severe issues in your body with prolonged use. Although the loading phase can help you feel the effects of creatine more quickly by saturating phosphocreatine cells much faster, the benefits are similarly perceived with a normal protocol of 5 to 7 grams daily over time. Without the loading phase, results appear in about 3 to 4 weeks. With the loading phase, benefits can be noticed in seven days after use, but at a high cost, with a greater likelihood of gastrointestinal issues. Therefore, unless you have a nearby sports event that justifies exceptionally accelerating results, it is not worth the risk. Mistake number five, thinking that caffeine and creatine should not be mixed. A common mistake is believing that caffeine nullifies the effects of creatine, which is not true. So far, there is no definitive answer or solid physiological mechanism explaining this supposed negative interaction. Several studies suggest that a high dose of caffeine, around seven milligrams per kilogram, may partially reduce the benefits of creatine, especially when both supplements are taken simultaneously during a creatine loading phase with high doses of both. This mistake can be easily avoided by not performing the loading phase. However, if you decide to follow the loading phase, it is prudent to consume caffeine and creatine with a gap of several hours. About six to eight hours should be sufficient. 
It is also important to consult your nutritionist before starting this phase to avoid mistakes and not impair your performance. Mistake number six, not tracking progress. It is very important to monitor the effects of creatine to adjust dosage and improve results in your body. Keep a record of your progress and adjust creatine use as needed according to the diet recommended by your nutritionist to achieve better results. This way, you will have data on your progress in workouts, especially strength training. This can help maximize benefits and avoid issues. Mistake number seven, not considering individual training. Creatine can have different effects on each person, depending on the type and intensity of training, as well as the type of creatine you use. If you are doing high intensity workouts, creatine will be more effective and results will appear more quickly. Therefore, it is important to adapt creatine use according to your training program to achieve the best results. Also, remember to track your progress in workouts and diet. Mistake number eight, skipping meals. A frequently overlooked but very important mistake is that creatine is more effective when combined with a regular and nutritious diet. Skipping meals can limit the benefits of creatine as your body needs adequate nutrients to function properly. Maintain a balanced diet and do not skip important meals. Follow a balanced diet and consult a nutritionist before starting creatine to achieve the best results. If you like the tips, leave a like and subscribe to the channel.